Hi everyone and welcome to my recap of the amazing game six from the World Championship match. This was a once in a lifetime game. Credit to both the players for putting on such a spectacular fight. It lasted 136 moves, seven hours and 45 minutes as both players threw everything at each other. It's hard to pick out a couple of highlights, a couple of key moments from this amazing mammoth game, but I've tried my best for you guys. We join here just before move 40 with both players low on the clock. Here actually Magnus was really struggling. In the studio, we were predicting, the commentary team, that Magnus might go down in flames. And the Pomiachi here had a very strong move for Black. Black's bishop is attacked and actually he retreated it to a decent square, but not the best square. He could even here have jumped into White's camp by bringing his bishop to b2. This bishop on b2 attacks the weak pawn on a3, a big target, and the key point is that due to this pin, White's knight cannot go and grab that bishop. If White's rook, however, captures the bishop, then we would have seen queen takes d3, capturing the white knight, and it would have actually been similar to the game with queen versus two rooks, but without minor pieces. The key difference, however, being that Magnus has a passive rook, and Black will guarantee that he wins this pawn on the next go. White's rook cannot slide across to defend this pawn because of a nasty check and a double attack. Actually, there were many twists and turns after this. Magnus had a winning opportunity, then Napomni actually was maybe winning again. But if we fast forward the whole way towards the end of the game, all the way to move 132, then we see this crazy position. White here has a rook, a knight, and two pawns against the black queen. Level material, but these pieces, these pawns, they outnumber that lone black queen. And here, Magnus found the killer blow. Napomni actually had defended perfectly for 130 moves for so long, but he just slipped up and Magnus found the winning move, pawn to e6. This allows the black queen to capture this rook, but if the rook is captured, a knight fork would decide the game. This would be a check, and next move, the black queen would drop off. Instead of capturing this rook, Black just moved the queen to the side and Magnus found the final touch, the final really clever touch to the game. He just brought his rook forward again. The Black Queen, if it takes this pawn, would walk into a nice, nasty and decisive knight fork. This would be a check and the queen would drop off. Instead, just to show the end of the game, the Black King sidestepped and after the pawn pushed forward, Magnus found the final move, forcing Napoleon to resign. He brought his knight forward, now the threat of e7 check is inevitable, about to make a new queen. But more importantly, this knight is the king's best friend. White's king has now a safe haven to hide on. It will zigzag forward if it's checked and hide on the g8 square, guarded by the white knight. Beautiful play by the reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen, but credit to Jan Napomniachi for his part in the fight as well. Now, with Carlsen in the lead, Napomniachi is going to have to fight hard, and many more exciting games are still to come. See you soon.